So in this video we're going to talk about cellular respiration and overview. So I want you to imagine you've done your job and you've got paid and you've got a check and that check is worth money. However, let's say you wanted to go to the pet store and you wanted to buy uh, your dogs and dog biscuits. Well, you couldn't go and spend that check directly at the store. What you would have to first do is go to the bank and cash it in for some real money. And this is what cellular respiration is. So glucose is a high energy molecule. We all know that it's sugar and sugar has loads of energy in it, but you can't use that directly in your cells. Instead, you need to make a molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And adenosine triphosphate is the energy that your cells use. And the process of extracting the energy from glucose to make ATP a usable form of energy by your cells is cellular respiration. So let's look at the equation for cellular respiration. The reactants are glucose, C6, H12, O6, and oxygen. And the products, what we get out of the other end, are carbon dioxide, CO2, water, and about 32 to 38 ATP molecules. And this is what we are interested in. This is what the whole process is all about. So here's glucose, and we're going to break glucose down into carbon dioxide, and in that process we're going to extract the energy from it. We're going to need some oxygen to do that, and another output of cellular respiration is water. Carbon dioxide and water are waste products. ATP is what we actually want. So one last thing before we start talking about the steps of cellular respiration is that we need to balance this equation. So this is a chemical equation, and you'll see here that we have six carbons in this glucose molecule. So it makes sense that if we're going to break down a molecule that has six carbons in it, we're going to get out six carbons. And you'll see that there are 12 hydrogens here. So it makes sense that we'll also get 12 hydrogens out. So we have to put a six in front of this water molecule here. For every glucose molecule, we're going to get six water molecules out. And if we count all the oxygens on this side, we'll see that we have to put a six in front of this oxygen. So to break down one molecule of glucose, we're going to need six oxygen molecules. And we're going to get out six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water, and about 32 to 38 ATP. Now, why it's a range is because cellular respiration uses a little bit of ATP to make loads of ATP and also can range in its efficiency depending on which cells it occurs in, etc. So let's look at the four steps of cellular respiration. For steps one to three, the goal is to make high energy electron carriers. And what we're going to do with those high energy electron carriers is use them in the fourth step, which is to make the majority of ATP. So step one is called glycolysis. And in this step, we are going to split glucose into two pyruvate molecules. So what we're doing is we're getting glucose, which is a six carbon sugar, six, and we're going to split that into two three carbon molecules. So the other steps, we're going to talk about what we're going to do with pyruvate. And notice that we've got two pyruvate molecules. And so if we do anything with a pyruvate molecule, understand that we're going to be doing that twice per glucose molecule because we've got two out of each glucose molecule. 
And throughout this whole step, I want you to track the carbon. So these circles here represent carbon molecules. Eventually, these carbons are going to end up in carbon dioxide. So that's step one. Step two is called pyruvate oxidation. And what we're going to do is oxidize pyruvate. Now, oxidation means to lose electrons. So if you remember our steps one to three, the goal was to make high energy electron carriers. In this first step, we're going to take an electron from each pyruvate and we're going to put it onto a high energy electron carrier, which can then be used in this last step. Okay, so that's what we're going to do in this step here. And we're going to end up with a molecule called acetyl-CoA. So that's that second step. Step three is we are going to do something called the Krebs cycle, also called the citric acid cycle. And what we're going to do in this step is we're going to fully oxidize the pyruvate, which is now acetyl-CoA. Now remember, to oxidize means to lose electrons. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those electrons from our acetyl-CoA and we're going to add them onto high energy electron carriers. Again, this step up here that we're trying to do, we're trying to make high energy electron carriers because that's what we need in our last step. So at the end of the Krebs cycle, so glucose is fully, we say, oxidized and uh, all the carbons are released as CO2. Okay, So we've actually done the majority of the equation for cellular respiration now in the first three steps. We've got glucose and we've broken it down to CO2. Now the other steps here are oxygen and 38 ATP or which 32 to 38 ATP. So these steps here and where we use the oxygen and we release uh, water and a bunch of our ATP that's going to be done in the last step. So step four is called the electron transport chain. Okay, we abbreviate it to ETC and we're going to make lots of ATP using the energy extracted from glucose. And where is that energy? It's in the high energy electron carriers. So these high energy electron carriers are something called NADH. So the first steps, one to three, have extracted the electrons and therefore the energy from glucose here, released the carbons of carbon dioxide, and the energy has been put via electrons onto NAD to make NADH. So this is where the energy is now. It's all contained within NADH molecules and a few ATP molecules, but not enough to really write home about. So we've got these high energy electron carriers now, and then we're going to use those high energy electron carriers to make the majority of our ATP in something called the electron transport chain. So that's an overview of cellular respiration. And now in the next video, I'm going to talk about each step in detail.